Yo, Brian Thompson here from Access Flight School, and we are joined today by Greg Rao. He is an agent of uh, Vector, a UPT rep, and he is here today to deep dive and discuss with us a little bit further about the difference between the standard RSL and the Skyhook equipped RSL. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. What is the difference between the standard RSL that we're all taught in our basic first jump course versus the Skyhook RSL? Because to many people, they look exactly the same when they're on the rig. But what what's the difference between the two? A standard RSL is connected to a riser via a snap shackle, and there's a lanyard that runs over your shoulder, which is then connected to the reserve pin. So when you cut away, all it does is peel back and pull the reserve pin. Then the, the spring loaded pallet chute deploys, you go back into free fall, and then the reserve is deployed that way. On a Skyhook equipped RSL, it is connected the exact same way to one of the risers, to a snack, snap shackle. There's the a lanyard, same lanyard, same reserve pin, and then the Skyhook lanyard is added to that. And the Skyhook lanyard is connected to the Skyhook itself. When the skyhook is initiated and all the force is being pulled in this direction, your malfunctioning main is connected to your reserve deployment system. So the free bag is on this side and then the reserve pallet chute is on this side. So then the within 20 feet of you pulling the cutaway handle, your reserve is out of the free bag and the parachute is developing. In the event that you have a straight reserve deployment, then all the force comes from this side, which is where your reserve pallet chute is connected. So what happens is it then disconnects. So the system is not locked together. Here at the Collins lanyard is a break in the cutaway housing that the lanyard is around the cutaway cable in the unlikely event the right riser were to prematurely get disconnected. As it leaves, it pulls on that cable and disconnects the left riser to ensure that both sides are disconnected at the same time and you are not deploying the reserve into a malfunctioning main connected on one side. You talked about with the standard RSL, you enter free fall again, and then you mentioned with the Skyhook RSL, it's the, the main that's already above your head is helping to pull out the reserve, and obviously that's a lot quicker. What's the difference in feeling between these two? So the, on a standard RSL, it's, it's more similar, the best way to describe it is it's doing a balloon jump. Okay. You get that feeling of going back into free fall from zero. And with the sky hook, the amount that you're traveling is only about 20 feet from the time that you pull the handle until the reserve starts developing. So it's a very different feeling. And I actually had a girl once tell me she pulled the cutaway handle and nothing happened. And then she looked up and the parachute changed color. Wow. So she didn't even notice. The sky hook is obviously designed to expedite the reserve deployment. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna ask or wonder or comment on, well, then that means we can take our emergency procedures lower. What's your opinion on people taking their emergency procedures lower knowing that the Skyhook works so fast? So in an emergency, there's a lot of other things involved and the lower you take it, you're just buttering up your disaster cake. And if you cut away lower and one of the things like I've got to find a place to land and most malfunctions don't happen directly over the drop zone. So I would always stick to my emergency procedure altitudes, if not higher. So it sounds like, as we all know, that those of us that have had malfunctions, there's other factors than just the reserve coming out above our head that requires some thought in order to keep our skydive safe. That is correct. So all of the gear, when we build it as the manufacturer, has to follow a standard which is set to us by the FAA called the TSO, Technical Standard Order. And um, that this, the TSO states that we have to have a survivable reserve parachute within three seconds or 300 feet from release of the malfunctioning main. So the advantage of the Skyhook is the, the Skyhook gets the reserve out into the airstream within 20 feet, basically. The distance from the Skyhook to the free bag is seven feet, and the longest line length on um, a reserve at this point is the tandem reserve, which is 12 feet. So basically, we just round that off to it's 19 or 20 feet, which takes less than a half a second. The reserve is out there inflating, as opposed to that whole 300 foot mark that the, the TSO limits us to. 
So the benefit of the Skyhook RSL versus the standard RSL is it sounds like it's a lot faster, that it comes out not only faster in time, but in less altitude as well. Yes, yeah, so what we have found is, uh, we have found that as, as a fair trade, um, we can pretty much say it cuts the time and distance in half. Well, and I've seen them, and that all depends. Once the reserve is out of the free bag, it all depends on how the reserve was packed, the kind of reserve it is, so on. Sometimes they can develop a little quicker, sometimes it takes a little longer, but the 150 foot range is, is a pretty good standard for us. So you had mentioned MARDS, M-A-R-D-S. What does that stand for? Main Assisted Reserve Deployment. So uh, the Skyhook is the original um, sport parachute MARD. Okay. And uh, it was developed by Bill Booth, who owns and, uh, United Parachute Technologies. Okay. And Bill is the inventor of a countless number of things that are put on all skydiving gear that's built in the whole world. The three ring system basically is what helps the RSL work so well. So Greg, I know there's some skydiving activities uh, where having your RSL or your Skyhook RSL hooked up all the time is great, but there's also some activities in skydiving where it may be less ideal, like crew, or maybe I'm about to do a, have a windy landing, or I have to do a emergency water landing where disconnecting the RSL or Skyhook RSL would be a wise decision. How easy is it to disconnect the Skyhook RSL? So that the, the Skyhook is is connected the exact same way as standard RSL is. So it is on our system, it is connected to the right riser and the snap shackle, which has this little yellow tab on it. You just pull the snap shackle and disconnect it. And it disconnects both the RSL and the Skyhook because they are basically the same thing. Is there any concern for camera flyers or anybody who chooses to wear a camera? Is there any concern for them to have a sky hook connected? The only concern would be is if you happen to be mounting a camera on the right side of the helmet. It used to be done in the 90s a lot that because the lanyard that connects the, uh, the riser to the, the uh, reserve pin is on the right side. That would be about the only time that I would suggest you don't use it. Greg, thank you so much for coming by and explaining the Skyhook to us. Um, I'm pretty sure some people are going to have some more questions after this. If anybody has any follow-up questions, where do you recommend they go? You can go to the website, uptvector.com, and there's a contact us section there, and you can send your questions there. Perfect. As always, go straight to the manufacturer if you have any questions. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you guys out there.